Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the second webinar of our book launch for the book, A, System, A Systemic Transition to Circular Economy, Business and Technology Perspectives, edited by Aldo Amato, myself, Joseph Sarkis, and Steve Evans. And this will be the second webinar. Our first webinar introduced three chapters and presented an overview. We wanted to give every speaker a chance for the chapters to present a little bit of information, an overview of their chapter, and maybe other information as well. Please save your questions to the very end, but you can also chat if you have something to say, please do chat. If you have a question, please put it in the chat. We'll come back to the chat later on, especially for questions that might be similar. Um, so please do use the chat, just the questions that you would have. Um, if you're gonna verbally ask them, we might ask you to get into the discussion at the very end. The book is part of a book series of the Green Industry uh, Network Studies by Springer, who is one of the co-sponsors here. The other co-sponsors of this event are the Green of Industry, Future Earth, which is the holder of the webinar, and the Sustainable Systems of Sustainable Consumption and Production, SSCP, and specifically the Circular Economy Working Group. So here's our program. I'll give a very brief history of the book and how it evolved which had, um, and then a basic overview and introduction by Steve Evans, one of the co-authors or co-editors of the book. Then we have three chapters that are gonna be presented, uh, a value perspective, chapter two, chapter nine, and chapter 10. The titles are right there. And then we'll finish up with an open discussion. We'll try to keep this under an hour to the best of our abilities. Now, a little bit of background. Back in March or May of two, the year 2020, we had an open forum on an equitable, inclusive, and environmentally sound circular economy. As you can see, similar um, sponsors occurred at that event. And we had a series of speakers and a, about 300 people attended that event. It was very early on in the COVID crisis. And it was a valuable learning experience to talk about circular economy more broadly. One of the speakers, uh, Aldo Mato, Professor Aldo Mato um, from UNESPI gave a talk on systemic innovation for circular economy and the group decided to do a series of projects, the Circular Economy Working Group, as well as Jin, and develop some books. One of the books was this book here that, fo that focused on business and technology. Um, and the other two books, there was uh, Sister Companion books, one focused on environmental issues and the other focused on uh, social issues. The social issue one has also been uh, published and this one just came out this year. And this is the idea from the forum and actually became a theme and uh, Steve, you can talk to this as well. It is time to shape a new economy, generates values for all, et cetera, et cetera. And this was the idea behind the book from a systemic um, and value generation perspective from a circular economy. Now the book um, is part of this series. So let me give a little push for the series for those who are here who are interested. We have about 12, 13 books in the series so far beginning back in 12, uh, 2011, 12. Um, and the editors of the series are myself and Diego Vasquez Bruce, the publishing editor, I think Aaron is also here. So he, if you have questions for him, you can contact him by chat right now or later on as well. And let us know if you're interested in writing or editing a book um, for this series. And that is where I will stop and let Steve, Steve, it is the floor is yours now. Thank you, Joe. Uh, welcome everyone. I would just like to make a quick introduction of the logic behind the book. All of us are interested in the circular economy, so we don't need the basics. And when we look back, we understand two things. The circular economy has not accelerated at the rate that we would like. And we know that no one organization can easily implement a circular economy. So those are really quite important problems that we want to better understand. And so in the book, we've chosen a two-part presentation 
the first part is taking a systemic view. We want to understand the interactions between players. And we've chosen a set of lenses, one lens for each chapter, to help us take that system view of the circular economy. In the second part of the book, we've looked for deep, novel, and insightful cases and brought them into the book. I hope by the end, we realize that there is hope. I think the title of transition is important in the book. I think that we're at a moment when the circular economy is beginning to take off. And so when we look back in 10 years time, we won't be saying, oh, it's still a bit slow. I think in 10 years time, we'll be excited about what has happened. Let me take you back to the first part of the book, those lenses which try to better understand the circular economy as a system in transition. And we're looking through the lenses of a design system, through the lens of ecosystem, of organization, and of multi-level perspective. But the first chapter, which we're going to hear about in the next presentation, is through the lens of value. And that's my opportunity to introduce my good friend Graziella and Paolo. And they have both practical and theoretical backgrounds. And I think this is very typical of the people in the room. We want to better understand something, but we also want to change practice. So everyone is welcome, and I hope that we all enjoy listening to everyone. And it's over to you, Graziella Paolo. And it's very good to see that you have your initials on your t on your shirt. Graziella and Paolo, G A P. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the name of this chapter is A Value Flow Perspective in Circular Business Model. We are four authors, uh, Marlene, Paul here, and Steve, and me. <laughs> okay. Sorry, something happened here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this chapter explores the concepts of circular business model and how they can generate sustainable value. It examines the challenges and opportunities in transitional from linear to circular value generation. And we also propose framework for implementing circular business model. Okay, in this chapter, chapter, we talk about some challenges for sustainable development. There are a lot, and we bring three here. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development poses the question, can economic growth be reconciled with environment preservation? Two, and the circular economy concepts offer uh, potential solutions by integrating economic activity with environment sustainability. And three, the circular economy aims to achieve sustainability through a collaborative efforts among nations, companies, and uh, communities. We also bring uh, in this chapter some challenges in implement circular economy in the chapter is some others. And this is uh, it's not difficult to infer that challenges to the circular economy are many, as it implies some changes in current reproduction model, consumption habits, and of course, even uh, society's perception of value. These transformations involve a redefining value generation, while the current linear model maximizes value through extraction 
extraction and disposal. Uh, the circular economy model emphasizes circulating production and byproduct products among various, um, various stakeholders, nearby reducing natural resource, resources, sorry, extraction and environment waste. Uh, of course, uh, import, importance of circular economy business model is uh, a topic <laughs> to see a lot in this uh, chapter. And in this figure here, the analysis of the curve show the inconsistency of a linear business model from sustainability perspective. In fact, true sustainability, true sustainability requires a balancing, of course, integration about uh, economic, environment, and social dimensions achievable uh, in linear business model only in theoretical points of uh, zero consumption or oh, no way. Those uh, higher consumption leads to a great imbalance among this uh, dimension, explaining the challenge that sustainable initiatives face in becoming established over the time with the currently economic model. Uh, so uh, this chapter we have uh, research question. I read it here. Uh, it's a big question. How can organizations effectively transition from linear value generation models to circular business model? Consider the interplay between economic, environment, and social dimension with the context of sustainable development. Uh, it's a mixed method. Uh, we apply, uh, we conduct a survey with 223 people, and we conduct a literature, literature review survey. Um, bibliotec uh, bibliometric analysis. And we use Enviv to do this. Now, Paulo is speak. <laughs> well, I'm Paulo, I'm PhD in, as uh, Graziella in the uh, Universidade de São Paulo. <clears throat> um, a, a linear uh, versus uh, uh, business uh, business models, uh, circular and, and linear. It's a, a topic, of course, uh, uh, extremely important. And uh, uh, comparing both in general um, brings some, um, um, uh, some uh, uh, questions we need and we need to ask and we need to answer. Um, because uh, to increase, uh, when we are thinking about a uh, linear business model, to increase financial results, so, I mean, uh, to grow, that's what uh, the companies in general and the society is looking for, it's necessary to increase the intensity of uh, energy and raw material consumption. So it's, uh, it's basic. In contrast, uh, in the circular business model, the value generation lies in the intensity of the cycles, not necessarily depending of the consumption or processing of the materials. So this is the basic difference, uh, um, which, which represents uh, a, um, a huge impact in, uh, in, in terms of uh, environment. Um, we, uh, as part of this work, we develop this framework um it's uh when thinking in analogy to the kaplan and norton's strategic maps this proposed framework established that sustainable principle must be included in the organization strategic precepts i mean uh social value business uh, uh, economic value and uh, environment value they all of them should be part of the uh, of the mission uh, of the company, and uh, the, the 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 change, the big change, is uh, in the process uh, level, uh, internal process. When we have to include in the framework um, all the, the process capable to absorb uh, the technical cycles cycles as part of the uh, circular economic. Uh, circular business model and uh, of course this is permeating 
the uh, internal process level and crossing uh, the client's perspective. That's why part of our introduction, we are talking about how important is the perception of the, the user, the, con the client, the consumer. And uh, at the end, uh, and the uh, all the, in the top, where we are measuring the value, uh, we are we have to to keep indicators to uh, which can reflect uh, the three dimensions of the value. Uh, this is also a challenge we know, but we have now some initiatives, uh, global initiatives, uh, capable to create this relation and capable to uh, compare those values, uh, and uh, this is the. Velo Balanced uh, Alliance uh, uh, has this mission and they are in, uh, in a higher level of development. And this, I, I think very soon we have a, something uh, completely, completely useful for uh, the organizations. Uh, also, uh, the, uh, when we are thinking about the, the, this ecosystem, uh, we, 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 we can uh, understand the role of each player. Of course, the organization itself uh, 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 should be including or creating a relation with the user or the, the, the final user. And um, But also we have opportunities uh, for intermediated uh, players uh, as other companies or um, organ uh, in, uh, informal organizations capable to be part of this ecosystem. And uh, at, at last, we have uh, uh, the society represented uh, by the government who uh, has a very important role um, as a catalyst uh, capable, uh, as a regulatory, but capable to catalyst uh, uh, circular um, economy. Uh, as you, we know, a circular economy uh, depends on the, this, um, some kind of uh, uh, incentive to, to, as a professor, uh, Steve uh, told at the beginning, uh, we, sh we would like to have a different response in terms of speed, but uh, this is, uh, uh, we understand it's uh, very important to, uh, uh, to achieve through the, the society or the government. Uh, uh, going to the conclusions, uh, of course, this paradigm shift uh, is important, depend of several levels, and uh, we are uh, we absorb uh, all those levels inside our framework, the, all the the ecosystem connected to there, and uh, the strategies uh, should be uh, adaptive. Of course, this is not new today. We have uh, several, but in the uh, adaptive uh, strategies, we should be able to uh, evaluate the value in three dimensions. We be able to. Uh, uh, reinforce or change our uh, internal um, uh, strategies to uh, to leverage a competitive uh, advantage. Uh, this is, of course, it's an ongoing ongoing research. We have uh, too much uh, still to learn, and uh, we need to reveal. And uh, it's really important the collaborative approach because this is the future of a circular business now, uh, a model as uh, uh, depend of several uh, layers of the society. That's it, it's, uh, that's our uh, references for this uh, presentation. Thank you, thank you Graziella, thank you Paulo. And welcome everybody again. And it's a pleasure now to present Diego Gracia. And Diego is from the IBEMA and paper industry. It's a industrial case that it's included here in, in our book that we have been working from several years and from and, and success cases that we developed 
together with the National Confederation of Industry here in Brazil, that we developed the transition roadmap to circular economy that is, it is free to download um, to any organization, to any industry here in Brazil that you can make uh, your, your um, level of maturity and then you can have a plan for, to, to, for this um, roadmap. So, um, Diego, thank you very much to join us. Diego is the International Business Manager at IBEMA. With over 15 years of expertise in international trade, previously as manager of strategy and marketing, he led the company's rebranding efforts and positioned it as a key player in circular economy. So, Diego, thank you very much for joining us and take your time. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you. Well, morning for, for Brazilian people, right? Maybe it's good afternoon for you guys. Uh, so good morning, everyone. First, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the invitation to be part of this book launch. It's a great honor and privilege for, for IBIMA to be included in this prestigious publication. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you, Aldo, especially. So... Um, I'm Diego Gracia, an international business manager at IBIMA, uh, working here for more than, than 13 years. Uh, I also spent a few years uh, managing the strategy and marketing department. And my background is business administration and, and also international uh, business as postgraduate degree. Uh, before we dive in, uh, let me give you guys a quick overview about IBIMA. We are one of the leading paperboard manufacturers in Latin America uh, with presence in over 20 countries. Uh, and we are really proud to uh, partner with major consumer brands producing packaging for products that are part of people's daily lives, uh, from pharmaceuticals and food to cosmetics and, and more kind, and other kinds of, of packagings. So today I'll be sharing insights uh, from chapter nine of our book, which address uh, how we are implementing these circular economy principles in the real world. Uh, before that, I just have to thank my colleagues from IBIMA who worked uh, much more harder than me writing our case. So thank you and congratulations to Alessandra, Andrea, Eduardo, uh, Sandri and Indaya. So let's start with the base of our industry, forests. Our CEO, Newton Saraiva, often says the forestry sector stems from a very strong root with sustainability in its story. That means that uh, we see ourselves as part of a natural system that can renew itself. Our work is not just about making paper. We know that our business also recovered damaged areas, uh, protect water sources, and keep different types of plants and animals safe. This is the great beauty of the forest uh, sector. So just following this line, uh, we can say that the forest sector has a beautiful advantage. Our products are really renewable. Trees grow back, creating a natural cycle of sustainability. So I can say that our business success is directly linked to maintaining healthy forests. It's a positive cycle where good forests uh, management leads to better products and a healthier uh, environment. And in our, our sector, we have famous certifications like FSC and PEFC that plays a crucial role. Uh, they are not just labels, but guarantees of sustainable practice. Uh, these standards ensure we protect biodiversity, water, uh, water sources, and the overall forest ecosystems. So this kind of certifications are helping us to prove that economic success and environmental care can go 
hand in hand. And how we do that? Uh, there is a concept called planted forests, and this is very important in our sector, in our industry. Uh, this expression is not just used uh, in Brazil, for sure, but it's a key part of how we work here. We use a balanced, a balanced system where 9.5 million hectares are for industry uh, and 6 million hectares are for conservation. It's really important to correct a common misunderstanding. Brazil would use it uh, in industry does not come from illegal cutting in the Amazon forest. In fact, all paper, paperboard, wood activities in Brazil are carefully controlled and come from planted forests. Uh, the forest sector is very important for the, the, the Brazilian economy. So this model does more than just provide raw materials. These forests help removing carbon from the air uh, they can take out about 4.5 billion tons of carbon from the atmosphere. So once again, uh, it shows how industry and protecting the environment can work well together. And then another point that can't be left out is energy. Energy is very important or vital in our industry. In Brazil, we are really lucky to have a head start in renewable energy. Right now, around 83% of our energy comes from win renewable sources. Uh, we are always looking for new ways to use water, sun, wind, and biomass. Okay, Diego, sounds great. Looks like everything is environmental friendly in your sector, but where is this circular, circular economy uh, on your job? So let's start to talk about products. Uh, with the circularity driver. In 2017, we launched uh, a product called Ibema Royal Copa, becoming the first Brazilian paperboard company to make cup stock. Cup stock is this kind of, of cup made with paper. Uh, the main purpose of this product is to replace or reduce the use of plastics and styrofoam. Uh, the market really liked it uh, between 2018 and 2022. Sales uh, grew by 190%. This shows that there's a strong demand for sustainable solutions in our industry. And today, the Royal Copa is a key part of our recycling strategy. Uh, we collect used cups to recycle them and produce other products. Uh, this leads us to the, our next innovation re, uh, product called Ritali. Uh, the name Ritali is Italian and means scraps or shaves, which really fits what this, pro what this product is about. Uh, this new type of paperboard is made of 50% recycled fibers and 30% of that comes from the product that the customers, the customers have used. So uh, to give you guys an idea, scientists aren't sure uh, exactly how many times we can recycle paper fibers, but th they think it's something between four and seven times. I've already heard uh, about 25 times when I was in a, in a in a show in a paper room uh, paper show in in Europe this shows that paper can be used many times in a circular economy so retali this product is much more than just a recycled product it's connecting different parts of our in industry from recycling groups to new companies and big brands together we are making packaging that can be used over and over again and as a complementary uh, initiatives, we have two really cool projects here at ABIMA. Uh, one of them is called Station Factory Price. And it's a project that combines environmental and social benefits. Uh, the idea involves 
uh, waste pickers who are individuals very common in Brazil, sometimes entire families who collect uh, recyclable materials. These weight pickers don't have to rely on intermediaries to buy their volumes after hard days of work, right? This project uh, allows the collector to bring the material directly to our factory and we pay the best market price for this raw material. In just two years, we have re received over than 1,300 metric tons of material and paid uh, about $125,000 to more than uh, 1,000 families. This project does more, uh, much more than just recycling. It generates extra income opportunities for families. And then we have this second uh, project. Uh, it's called a Ciclo Bon or Good Cycle in English. Uh, so we are working with some partners as startups, printing companies and coffee uh, shops and big fast food brands. And we have collected more than a half million cups. That's about 6.3 uh, tons, metric tons of materials that we recycled. Uh, the startup co uh, collects the, the cups directly from the restaurant bins in Sao Paulo city and goes directly to our factory to be recycled. Uh, of course, this project isn't just about collecting waste, it's about uh, rethinking how we use our product product or packaging in general. Uh, so to finish, uh, I just want to say that at IBIMA, circular economy isn't, isn't just a concept. Uh, it's our daily re reality from Royal Copa to Ritali, from station factory price to good cycle. We are actively reshaping our industry. Uh, we are proving that economic success and environmental responsibility can coexist. Uh, our journey is creating new jobs, developing a, a innovative technologies and changing how our partners view our packaging. Uh, the challenges are big, but we think that the opportunities are bigger. Together, we can redefine our industry's future and make a real difference for our planet, for sure. So once again, uh, thank you for the invite and thank you for, for the listening. Thank you, Diego, as well. Um, it's very interesting what you present here. Now, people who are here, you can have your questions. You can put them in the chat. I've been putting them in the chat. Uh, right now, Diego, can you please take down your presentation? Susanna, sure. while I introduce you, can you bring up your presentation? Our next speaker uh, of our uh, last chapter here is Susanna Taboso Chavarro, um, who has a PhD in environmental science and technology, showing our broad perspective, not only business degrees and business programs. Uh, she is a postdoctoral researcher at Erasmus University of Rotterdam and Delft University of Technology, both in the Netherlands. And she's working on a international Sino-Dutch project um, uh, which includes, which is part of inclusive way, why, wise waste why cities. City? Yeah, yes, I know it's a, it's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> uh, she worked on urban metabolism and the environmental social assessment of urban vegetation and agriculture, as she will be talking about here in this case, uh, her chapter. But she's also worked on many other uh, similar topics. Uh, she's working right now on urban waste management systems, going from. Uh, in a, in a, ta a textile sector going from agriculture, or I'm sorry, rural areas probably to more urban areas, which again covers a broad spectrum. She's worked with life cycle assessment, social life cycle assessment, as well as social and ecosystem metabolism. The floor is yours, Susanna. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So yes, I'm an environmental scientist. Um, and because I'm an environmental scientist, I like to analyze things between different perspectives, a social, environmental, also economic perspective. Uh, so today I'm here to present chapter 10. That is not only my chapter, it's also a research for different uh, researchers, for the autonomous 
from the Autonomous University of Barcelona. So in my former university, I'm now in, in Rotterdam, in the Erasmus University of Rotterdam, but my former university in Barcelona, the Autonomous University of Barcelona is very focused on urban agriculture and food systems. So this research that uh, are in this chapter is more like a, a collection of different circular strategies that has been implemented in urban, in urban agriculture. So the chapter, uh, it's uh, related, as I said, to urban agriculture. So the name is Circular Economy Principles in Urban Agri-Food Systems and the Potentials and Implications for, um, for Environmental Sustainability. So let's dive in. So the objective of this, uh, of this just chapter is to outline and analyze the environmental implication of applying different circular economy strategies in urban agriculture. So maybe you know that in urban agriculture can take many different, uh, many different forms. They are within uh, cities or near the city and could be greenhouses, opener systems, vertical farming, or building integrate agriculture. So um, this urban agriculture, if we apply some circular economy principles, uh, it will be increase the resource efficiency and also reduce the depletion of critical resources. So these systems can foster kind of symbiosis within urban and also regional contexts, uh, context and enhancing sustainability at multiple levels. So you can see here in this figure that there are, in this one, there are like different models that could be for urban agriculture that we can implement uh, in cities. The first one is the typical linear agriculture that this one is uh, uh, consume uh, primary resources and generate uh, waste. So it's the, the typical business as usual agriculture. Uh, so by shifting to circular urban agriculture systems, we can reduce dependency on important resources, for example, phosphorus for the, for the nutrients. Also, we can strengthen internal markets and also we can improve local regional self-sufficiency. So the next model or the next uh, way to implement urban agriculture is being circular. So in this case, you have secondary inputs, so inputs from any scale, but no primary. And uh, you can uh, reuse and recycle uh, these, uh, these products or these materials. So um, in this case, uh, these products could be from any scale. But if we propose a circular economy that it's aligned with urban metabolism principles, we can um, we can uh, like um, have these secondary e inputs from urban scale. So this means that we can improve the resource of flow, the resource uh, flows. For example, water. We can improve, um, uh, for example, fertilizers or substrates. So this is why. In here, you have all the different possible uh, circular economy strategies that could be implemented in urban agriculture systems. So uh, in this um, chapter, we discuss different strategies. You can see here a summary, and I will explain just, I will focus just on, on few of them. So applying circular economy principles in urban agriculture has obvious benefits such as enhancing water and nutrient efficiency, also reduce emissions and minimize waste. However, it's essential to quantify this benefit against trade-off, which means that we have to, in some way, try to uh, account for the environmental analysis for every uh, stage of the urban agriculture uh, life cycle, which means if we want to implement a circular strategy in urban agriculture, we have to see if this, if the impact, the environmental impact will increase or decrease. So this is why we have LCA, for example, life cycle assessment. So with life cycle assessment is an invaluable tool that we can, that do, can help us quantify to what extent these circular economy strategies 
uh, can enhance sustainability in these systems. So as you can see here, urban agriculture offers different, different type of uh, benefits, but here we divide it in different scales. So there are the, the ideal ones will be at building scale, but also at urban scales, and the less ideal will be, will be resources uh, from external scales. So let me explain some of these uh, strategies. One is rainwater, for example. Uh, one strategy for, um, one effective strategy is rainwater harvesting. So in urban settings, harvested uh, rainwater can address uh, water scarcity, especially in semi-arid areas. For example, in Barcelona, we have had a lot of problems with water. So you have our uh, urban agriculture that it doesn't depend on uh, tap water. So in this case, it's better to apply this kind of uh, circular strategies. Also, also could be reclaimed water in order to avoid the use of tap water. So this will be one of the, the circular strategies that we propose and we test, we also test in, in our university. The second one, uh, it's related to uh, resources. So in this case, uh, resources, for example, estrobite. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. So for example, estrobite. Um, Estrobite is a secondary uh, fertilizer. In this case, uh, it's a phosphorus. If you know, it's a phosphorus-rich material from wastewater treatment. Uh, so it's a secondary fertilizer that can enhance agricultural self-reliance. And in this case, this approach supports circular urban metabolism because we are linking urban waste management with agricultural production. So we are using this wastewater in order to apply as a fertilizer in the same system at urban scale. And another example, for example, uh, could be alternative uh, substrates. In this case, for example, compost from municipal solid waste, or depending on the, on the location will be compost, or also you can use for substrate, you can use uh, live, like um, sheep wool, or dry moss, or pine bark, also wood fiber, and also cork. So these, Alternative substrates can offer lower um, environmental impacts and greater uh, resilience um, for, for these systems. So as you can see here, there are different examples, all the details you can find in the, in the chapter 10. So just uh, some final remarks. Uh, the first one is uh, the, we need the standardization of circular economy definitions and metrics. We have LCA, life cycle assessment, that is a tool to measure environmental impacts and it's very well established. And we can use this tool in order to calculate the environmental impacts of applying one strategy or another strategy. But there is a complexity to integrate LCA and circularity indicators because there are many different indicators for uh, measuring circular circularity and there are many different uh, methodologies. The second one is accounting for all parameters that have a role in urban agriculture systems. So the environmental assessment of these strategies in urban agriculture systems should account not only for the relevant, relevant impacting uh, items, but also those parameters that affect the performance of the system, which means that the nutrient uh, metabolism or the climatic conditions and in order to detect potential nutritional deficiencies or excessive evapotranspiration. So this is kind of a, an example that we have to try to account for all the parameters. And the last one will be a system perspective. We already talked about system perspective. So it's very important in urban agriculture system uh, in order on the implementation of these strategies. So applying this system perspective to these strategies encompass a good knowledge about the system. So you have to know the relevant flows, the factors that are affecting uh, the behavior, the level of resilience and the scales. As I said before, a building scale or urban scale. So they are ideally for this kind of um, systems in order to apply these circular economy strategies. And that's it, this is a summary. 
Uh, and if you want to see all the details, you can check uh, chapter 10. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna. Um, Steve, the floor is yours to at least begin our discussion, open discussion. Um, your thoughts and, and or questions to the speakers and or anybody from the floor who has a question is also welcome. We have a number of discussion points on the chat. So Steve, the floor is yours right now, although you can chime in as you wish as well. Oh, can you hear it, Steve? I think you're pointing to me, but I'm not sure what we're doing next because. Okay. Uh, All so... right. That, all right, Steve, we'll we'll take over. Um, Aldo, would you have a question for the speakers right now, overall? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. As we could see today, we have a more um, approach in the biological side, mainly in the industry, in the cases that not only from industry, but industry and agriculture and cases. So I would like to, you, know, you to explore a little bit more and the re regenerative solutions, what in your view uh, it is and how you are working on this concept of the regenerative circular economy and what are the, the, the main points and, and the, 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 the operational and strategic aspect to, to reach them. Thank you. So Aldo, is that a question for one of the speakers or a group of the speakers? What? what is yes, I think uh, to Susanna and Diego, please. Aldo, please, could you repeat the, the question? I didn't know that you were asking for me. Yes, Diego and Susanna, please, if you could explore a little bit more the regenerative approach that you have uh, been working in your industry, you talk about and the, the related to the forest and so please if you could explore a little bit more on those strategies please okay just talking about the our sector uh, paperboard industry i think we have a small conflict uh, there, there's few companies much more interested on uh, virgin fibers coming from from the wood coming from the forests and ibema have uh, both capaci capacities. We can, uh, we have forests and we are getting fibers coming from the, the, the forest uh, with the, the best kind of responsibility involved on this. Uh, but we are positioning uh, IBEMA at the market as a solution for, for recyclable products. And it's getting very well with big brands that are involved on this. We know that there's a lot of big brands that they are committed uh, with, uh, you know, goals of sustainability and everything. So it's coming uh, easy for us to find uh, new partners to keep pushing the, the recycle uh, process. So, yeah, I think it, for us is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a really nice uh, growth in, in our sector. Just to add, Diego, we have a question here related to the biodiversity and because you talked about the climate change and all um, the strategies related to this. And are you taking account also the biodiversity aspect? Certainly. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, the planted forest model adopted in Brazil uh, requires companies to maintain equivalent conserv uh, conserved areas, right? So today we have a business unit called uh, Ibema Florestal, is like forest Ibema, uh, which takes care not only of the planted forest, but also of the preserved areas, uh, including rivers, animal, fauna, and flora, and everything. Thank you. Please, Susanna, can you talk a little bit more about the regenerative yeah, in, circular economy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I will call it regenerative circular economy. Um, 
because you know our our focus is in urban agriculture and the thing is uh, that we are trying in in our research group we are trying to bring urban agriculture which means trying to to bring some green green spaces to city that is a kind of regenerative um but the thing is that we have this focus more in productive green spaces which means that are not only decorative that you have some green near your home but also you have some food trying to combine these things and trying to 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 be proactive and to to have this regeneration with green spaces but proactive green spaces so the idea is uh, in urban agriculture is to know like to have the same linear uh, business as usual agriculture that we have, the conventional one, trying to reuse all the materials and uh, resources that we have in cities, for example, for, for as I said before, for substrates or trying to recirculate uh, water within the system, things like that that could help to have a, a more sustainable urban agriculture and trying to get advantage of all the things that we have in city, like all the um, ways, because all the ways, but could be resources in order to use in urban agriculture. So this is more like the, the focus and maybe it could be more, more like to regenerate cities and being more green and more practice and not to um, depend on external resources. So this is the idea and try to combine uh, everything. And also the uh, water, because we have a lot of uh, also problems with water and try to regenerate this uh, water and try to use. And um, this is the, the main idea. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Joe, if you want to continue Please. Yeah, I, I think one of the questions, uh, Lu Luciana, um, you had a question about the definitions and the principles. Um, I think that's an excellent question overall. It, the It's not clear what we all mean by the circular economy. So just a, a couple words from each of the presenters as what model has influenced you or what model are you using for a circular economy? Just very briefly, just to give us an overview of what models might be used. And I think she had this for one presentation, but I think it's true for all of them. So Susanna, why don't you begin, then Diego and then Gassiello, very quickly. What model of circular economy have you been that been influenced by in your studies? So for me, I'm trying, um, for me, circular economy, I'm trying, first of all, one of the things that it's very important uh, for me to circular economy within my research, I'm trying, first of all, to include people, which means to include, it's not only uh, a matter of recirculate uh, resources, it's also to include everybody in this, um, in this decision making or in this process to try to tran yeah, to transform our economy into circular economy. And uh, the, the other thing is I'm trying to think more in the 10R principles, Ten. like more the higher uh, hierarchies, like not just recycling, that we think uh, circular economy is recycling. No, I'm trying more to think, okay, what is uh, the most important, trying to reduce, rethink, and uh, also trying to refuse, like, use less. So this is more the things that I have in my mind always when I try to read and try to focus on these um, principles. But 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 I noticed that most of the stuff that you had were valorization in your mm -hmm. circles there. But mm -hmm. before you get to that step, you're saying do the top reads before you get to that level. Sorry? Do the top R's, the refuse, rethink, redesign, before you worry about valorization. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Diego, please go ahead. What what aspects or definitions of the circular economy did you use for your organization? Well, actually for us, uh, this recycled paper market is much more major in, in Europe. We already have that reference. It's much more structured uh, and certainly serve as a reference for us. 
uh, actually the principle behind everything is not any rocket science. We want to transform packaging into new packaging. Uh, the key point is ensuring how this material returns to our factory. And in Brazil, we are very behind in, in the solution at the infrastructure level. So that's really interesting. Everything. Okay. Yeah. And so basic recycling, but you have, but there are barriers and this gets into the whole issue of having barriers and you're thinking infrastructure. And I think this is something that hasn't been discussed much in the literature is the whole infrastructure around developing a circular economy and something that we're kind of looking at in other studies related to actual transportation, you know, systems to pick it up, collection. Brazil isn't as mature as some other areas, especially in the forestry products industry, you're saying. You're right, yeah. Okay, and the last one, um, uh, Gazalia um, and the Paulo, can, can you describe what model influenced your work or what your assumptions are for the circular economy? Well, well um, actually, we uh, our work was based first on practice. Uh, uh, after interviewing um, more than 200 companies uh, in different countries, and we compare this with the, um, the challenges uh, already listed on the literature. So uh, our framework um, was actually aiming to, um, to fill these gaps. Of course, as a framework, we, we don't have a, a deep, uh, um, a, a, a deep detailing uh, of the, the process uh, because there, there, there is no enough information so far. This is uh, uh, what uh, gives us an idea about the need of a future work uh, and actually, uh, I we will answer uh, some of your questions in chat, and uh, it's amazing about NGOs. Uh, we are working with NGOs um, like uh, WWF and TNC, mainly TNC. This morning we had a meeting with TNC actually, and uh, uh, something very curious. They, of course, the focus of them is uh, sustainability, of course, but no circularity uh, it's still something to be open there so the practice is still very challenging and uh, uh, this is uh, um, in the, they have a very important role in uh, actually pressing the um, uh, pushing the, the governments and uh, also um, create an influence on the communities but I, I think circularity is still I think that, yeah, if I can add on to that, this is a this is a difficulty of getting stakeholders involved overall in circularity. And I think Susanna pointed that out. There's no real standard definitions. Everybody has their own. Mm -hmm. You even developed a new model based on your research that may contradict or go against other models that already exist in terms of what they're doing. And this is why maybe NGOs and other stakeholders do not become involved. When I heard the WWF, I was thinking, Oh, wow. Um, biodiversity, right? Um, but you're saying that they did not include circular economy in their strategies, which is kind of interesting and may be limited by a good definition, a good framework that we all use a little bit something different in terms of what we're trying to do, whether it's business or scholarly community. I think we need to end it there. We're already one minute over. Aldo, closing words from you. Thank you to all the speakers, but Aldo, closing words. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, and, and for attending this and our launch webinar. We had the first one that talked more related to the to the technical side and more the, the, the industrial cases related to technology and business and to the technical circular economy. Here we have two um, cases from the biological side, but both of them and both of um, cases and, and, and webinar and, and the book itself 
and work on on the system perspective that maybe it's include the the the, the circular um, an aspect and the life cycle of the product is in the center it's in the it's in part of it but the function and all other um, actors need to be part of this transition so and the systems perspective and the value um, perspective that we 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 bring here in this book taking this long term and value and for our positive um, results is the the main message that we we have here and in our book but i will give if steve um, could have um, and make the the final final words please and uh, steve i i write on the chat please thank you well i think the easiest thing is goodbye everyone we're all over time keep going i do think that we're at a an important inflection point with the circular economy and more people are taking system views. I really loved our cases this afternoon. I wanted to spend more time trying to understand the properties of biological systems and mineral systems and how they are different in circularity. That's for a different day. So please excuse my lack of questions. I had too many. But it's important that we do keep talking together because we need to share this knowledge if we're going to accelerate the circular economy. And on that hopefully positive note, I'll say good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for reminding me, Diego. It is good afternoon here and goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day, whatever. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.